For centuries, people have speculated over how men and women of the future will look, how they'll act, what abilities we might have, and when we're going to finally develop superpowers. But only recently have we finally begun to understand the conditions required for evolution to take place, and with this knowledge, we can more accurately predict how we'll look in the future. So let's find out when we're getting gills, wings, and laser vision in our video of 7 ways the human race might develop. Number 7. We'll all look Brazilian. As modern transportation becomes even more expensive, our world also becomes more global allowing for the mixing of even more genetic material between populations. Translation, fancy planes and trains means everyone will get to bang each other. And the more we do this, the less racist the world will become. As genes flow between nations, the world's population will gradually start to develop the same uniform appearance. And we are actually witnessing some of the effects of this today. The recessive genes which cause blue eyes, freckles, and red or blonde hair are being diluted and removed thanks to migration and mixing of different races. It is expected to take around 10,000 years minimum before humans become so alike in appearance race becomes hard to distinguish. But when it does, evolutionary biologists say it's likely we'll take on a mixed race appearance similar to Brazilians. Now, I've seen Brazilians they're pretty hot, so I for one am all for this. But even though blending the races will end racism, that doesn't mean the world will be perfect. We'll just have to find more creative ways to divide and hate each other. Come on people, I'm sure we'll figure it out. Number 6. We'll split in two. Not literally, unless you walk face first into a buzzsaw obviously. There is a popular evolutionary theory which predicts that eventually human beings may split into two races of different species, where one group of genetic superiors with healthy bodies and intelligent minds will come to dominate a group of inferior underclass humans who are dim-witted, ugly, and squat. Kind of like goblins, except in baseball caps and crocs. Evolutionary theorist Oliver Curry of the London School of Economics says humanity may peak from an evolutionary standpoint at around 3,000 years, and within 100,000 years, humans will break up into these two distinct races thanks to a reliance on technology which reduces many humans to nothing more than highly domesticated animals. But could this shocking prediction come true much sooner than 100,000 years? As humans begin to learn even more about themselves genetically, it is inevitable people will use this information to pick and choose who they start a family with. Those with access to genetic technologies will inevitably be wealthy and powerful, and it's likely they'll choose only to breed with each other, leaving us genetically inferior slobs to a lifetime of touching our dirty goblin parts while staring at pictures of our sexy brainiac overlords. Number 5. We all go bald. Compared to early humans, people today are practically hairless, aside from Sean Connery who is like 95% chest hair. Today, our bodies are covered in dormant hair follicles which would have been active on our ancestors, and it is predicted that we may shed even more of our hair in the future. To predict how or why we might turn into a race of Greg Leganis lookalikes, we need to explore why we lost our hair in the first place. Scientists have speculated over many biological needs that could have caused it, but Nina Jablonski, the professor of anthropology at Penn State, believes it was the specific requirement of cooling down our brains which was the main driving force behind human hair loss. So with global temperatures rising and human hair diminishing, are we now closer than ever to making barbers extinct? We should start a breeding program or something. Number 4. We'll lose a toe. Bad news for people who like to wear a toe ring on their pinky toe, but it is believed likely that eventually humans will lose their fifth and smallest toe. The earliest horses are an example of how this can happen. 
because before hooves, horses actually had three or four functional toes. And you can still see the remains of these on the bones above their hoof today. Horses lost their extra toes because they didn't need them. And aside from people who do parkour, neither do we. Early men used their toes for climbing and grappling, but since our magical tree adventures ended, our toes began shrinking to their current size. Now we do actually require these new stubby fellas, especially the big toe, in order to facilitate proper balance and walking. But the pinky toe is basically the Perez Hilton of your foot. It serves no real purpose except to cause humans pain. We smash it into tables, crush it inside our shoes, and eventually, through evolution, the pinky toe will disappear completely. Bye bye pinky. We won't miss you. Number 3. Big Brained Manga Aliens For the past two and a half million years, human brains have consistently grown larger. And according to genome experts Dr. Alan Kwan and Nicolay Lam, this will continue at least for the next 100,000 years. The pair created a series of images which took previous human evolution into account and paired it with knowledge about how advanced genetic engineering technology might affect us physically. They predict that within 20,000 years, our heads will have grown slightly, with most people looking like Kelsey Grammer with reverse Zika. Then, at 60,000 years, human heads will begin to look noticeably different as our eye areas will also start to expand. Lamb speculates that this will be due to the colonization of solar system planets further from the sun, where low light environments will likely be the norm. Then, at 100,000 years, come the manga eyes, along with extremely bulbous heads and wider nostrils, to make breathing in low oxygen environments easier. However, Quan and Lamb have stressed that their investigation contains a lot of speculation and that due to the effects of technology, there's actually a more shocking evolutionary possibility which may come into play. Number 2. We might stop evolving. Because human beings have evolved greatly compared to our humble, gloopy beginnings, it is of course natural to assume that we will continue to develop, but this may not necessarily be true. And it's all thanks to that international orgy we mentioned way back in number 7. In an isolated population, a new genetic trait is easily passed down through generations via crossbreeding, and eventually this mutation becomes established as normal. But with a global population such as our present one, significant genetic mutations find it much harder to establish themselves. Biological evolution may take far longer to occur if it even occurs at all. But don't worry, even if we stop evolving biologically, humans will almost certainly still evolve. We'll just have to give it a little helping hand. Number 1. Unnatural Selection There is a general consensus amongst evolutionary scientists that the speed at which human beings biologically evolve will be far surpassed by the way we do technology. Why would we need stronger muscles when we have EEG technology on the way which allows you to move machines and exoskeletons with your mind? What purpose would enhanced eyesight serve if we can use bionic contact lenses like those developed by Tokyo's JEOL company? Why would we need to develop physically in any way at all if nanotechnology reaches a point where we can repair and enhance every area of our body at a cellular level? However, the problem this kind of assisted evolution poses is that humans become frail without the presence of technology. A study by German scientist Alexander Cordial found that humans today are far weaker in terms of muscular strength and pathogenic resistance than we were in the past, due to our over-reliance on machines and modern medical procedures. So are humans actually in the process of de-evolving? In some ways, yes. And this can be observed by directly walking into any branch of Abercrombie & Fitch. But one way we could reverse this backwards trend is by using genome editing instead of technological enhancements as a means of directly evolving human beings, making genetic adjustments that would normally take thousands or millions of years, but which may now only take five minutes. Well, that sounds really promising, right? If only someone had made a video about that very subject.
Oh, look what I found behind your ear, little Timmy. A video on the seven creepiest possibilities of genome editing. Why don't you settle down and watch while Grandpa takes a load off?